All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, the Valley Champions. See behind them, AI, the NVC. Drew Valentine with me on the Boss Man Show, the Rambles of Leon, Chicago. What's up, Drew? How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Uh, appreciate you getting me on, man. This is dope. Appreciate you. Anytime, brother. Let me ask you this, man. You know, before the tournament started, man, you had lost no more than an hour. How did you use that to refocus your team? Before Arch Madness going this run you went on to get this title for you guys one more time f- before you all, you know, dip out of that conference, man. Yeah. Um, you know, I think the way that the way that it went down where it was a, you know, whoever won that game won the conference. Um, and then for us to see them celebrating um on the court, you know, jumping up and down, getting the trophy, getting the um you know, just the the attention and their their home crowd going crazy, get them getting to cut down the nets. Like I think we really needed a, a competitive edge going down to uh, Arch Madness. Um, you know, just it, it helps when you got that little, little extra like pit in your stomach. Obviously, like we feel like we're competitive and we prepare and we we have, you know, a lot of guys that want to win. But, you know, having that little extra juice, I think that really helped us come out, um, especially from the defensive standpoint. Like we knew that the way that we defended, giving up 102 points that last game, that wasn't us. So, um, I think we really focused. We we got back to, to who we are. I think we had a great defensive showing, you know, only averaging about 50 points a game down there at Arch Madness. No doubt, man. That's where I, I sometimes I think this is, sometimes losses are good. They have to come at the right time, you know. <laughs> so it can always get you back. I know I play I play football, so I know how it was. We were fulfilling ourselves and the coach would get to get, get on so about, hey, we need to get back to the basics here. So I think having it happen so soon I and mean, knowing what was ahead of you, I think it really helped you guys. I saw you guys all weekend, man. That was locked in. I was watching the game in Sunday at Chili's with, with, with my dad. I'm like, those dudes are locked in. <laughs> they are yeah. locked in for real. <laughs> For sure, man, and and it helps because we've had guys that have been through before. You know, they got a lot of experience and they got the championship pedigree, and you know they they know what it takes. So that's why I had so much confidence going to the weekend that we could get it done. No doubt, and I watched the video that that you all posted on YouTube, man. Just trust and believe, and that's that's, that's so that is so true, man. Because when you in a tough situation, it's tight, late game situation, adversity hits. If you don't have trust or belief in your in your the guy next to you, man, you might play hero ball. Or do something no you shouldn't doubt. do. So having that, those two simple terms, trust and believe, I may be trite, but it's so true though. So in sports, whether it be football, basketball, to get the job done, win in the in the clutch. No doubt, and that's that's what we've been talking about. It started about halfway through the year. You know, I think, you know, as a coach, you kind of don't want to like you you want to come up with some themes for your team of the year. You know, winning is fun is is something that we've talked about all year. It came from actually, I was listening to a podcast. Um, you know, uh, this summer um, when we had our, our break between when we finished our summer workouts and then when we started our preseason. And it was a podcast. It was actually Sean McVay's podcast called Flying Coach. Um, and he had Joe Judge on there, who was a uh, the head coach. He just got fired, but he was the head coach of the, of the Giants. But he got that job by being the special teams coach with the, with the New England Patriots. And, you know, he talked, he was talking about, you know, Brady and Belichick. And he talked about this story where Julian Edelman, you know, they were going through it after um, during one of their years. Uh, and, and everybody talks about how the Patriots, they just look miserable or, you know, it's, you know, is it really fun to be up there? And he wrote on the board, he wrote simply winning is fun. And that's what I wanted to concentrate on this year with our guys was, you know, there's a lot of distractions with, you know, last year we can't, we were in, in school. There's no students on campus. There's no fans at games. There's a lot of distractions, but you got to keep the main thing the main thing and winning is the is the main thing and winning those games getting to cut down the nets in St. Louis at Arch Madness like that you can't have more fun than that so that's been you know kind of our mission and then we kind of shifted during the year to to believe in and trust in. and it's it's twofold it's your coaching staff it's the guy next to you and then also yourself believe in your training trust in your training um trust that our style of play is going to get you open shots trust that you don't have to like you said go play hero ball and so those have been kind of our two themes of the year winning is fun and then believe in trust about lucas man that 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 guy's a baller man he's he's, he's a dog out there but talk about what he means to your team and you got another double double on sunday man uh helping you all hold drake 35 percent shooting tell me about that young man what he meant to your program this year and, and just just program as in general brother uh, he's been great, man. I, I mean, he's the ambassador. We call him the standard. We call him the mayor. I mean, we he, he's the man. I mean, he spoke at, you know, graduation last year. He spoke at new student orientation this year. He narrated the Loyola Project. I mean, he's just, 
he's that kind of guy where he's got just that that energy and that that swagger and that um, presence to him where he just is a calming presence and he's always prepared for the moment. He never shies away from the moment. And he's had so many big plays for us on both sides of the ball this year. And uh, he's our leader and um, he should have been player of the year in the conference, first of all. Second of all, he should be the national defensive player of the year, in my opinion. So I think he got snubbed from those those two awards, but I think he'll take winning the, the championship and getting the tournament over those any day. I think you said it, man. He's a two way guy. I mean, he's giving it to you both ways, and that's what you want. Have a guy who bring bring it with you no matter what. Offensive, defensive, every night he's bringing it for you. And and how is his example for guys like Ayer, man, and Ryan, those guys, man, seeing what this guy does every day, how he works at his game on has us just prepared to be a great player. But talk about that part of Lucas's game as well, man. His preparation and how he shows other guys by example how to be great. Yeah, I mean he's. He's one of the most hardworking dudes that I've been around. I mean, he gets in the gym on his own all the time. You know, you can't be great in college just showing up to practice because everybody plays hard. Everybody competes. Everybody says they want to be a pro. But what are you really doing outside of it um, to, to make yourself a pro? And I think not only the work that he puts in on the court, but also the work that he puts in the weight room as well. I mean, he's gotten his body in tremendous, tremendous physical condition where he can play at a high level for 30 minutes a game. And we ask him to do a lot. He has a higher usage rate offensively, and he has to guard the best player defensively. So I think his conditioning, him showing everybody like, look, you have to, your body has to look like this if you want to um, be able to play at this high level for 30 minutes. So he works his butt off, um, obviously, on the court with his skill. He's improved so much, um, you know, as a scorer, as a ball handler, getting to the basket with quickness. But then he's also improved from a, from a physical standpoint as well. And you have to love when your team – took Drake's punches. You know, I was watching, as I watched the game with my father, I said, hey, they they, 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 they look very composed. They they take, they going to make a run the course because Tuck, Tucker's a great player and they're they going to compete. But hey, your guys show poise, man, making big plays, which took, 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 took punches, man. So talk about the composure of your guys, man, in that pressure situation, arch madness, all those fans, man, seeing your guys pull through it through all the adversity they, they had coming up that, that their way at that day. Yeah, I think it goes back to kind of what we talked about earlier about like the edge that they came with. Everything's about the mental to me. I mean, it's four to one. I mean, Chris Knight talks or Chris uh, Beard talks about it. Bob Knight, sorry, talked about it all the time. Like if you come with the right mentality every single game, you're going to put yourself in position to be successful. And, you know, that 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 mentality, it, it just it, it allows you to have a good vibe and confidence throughout the whole game. And so. Our guys, they've been through it all year. I mean, we've played tight games. We, you know, lost a couple early at Battle for Atlantis, um, but we were able to beat, you know, DePaul in a close game. We were able to go to Vanderbilt and, and win a close game. We were able to beat San Francisco in a close game, neutral site. And then in conference play, we won a ton of, you know, one possession, two possession, overtime, double overtime games. And so I think that allowed us to have confidence that, you know, we were going to pull out the win no matter what happened with the adversity in the game. Well, fans you understand, Coach Belhound, this is this man. The Valley is a tough out, no matter what record, the record is. No games easy in that conference, man. It's a dog fight. You all are close together recruiting the kids, know each other recruiting the same kind of kids, same kind of AAU program. So talk about the Valley from top to bottom, how tough that conference is for fans who don't understand how really it is down here in the ATL. Yeah, I mean, it's the top 10 league in the country. You look at, you know, Ken Palm obviously is, is you know, I would say probably – the, the most popular analytics site nowadays. And so you've got the Power Five, you've got the Big East, and then you've got the Mountain West, the WCC, the American, and then the uh, the Valley is the num rated the number 10 league in the country. We've got five top 100 teams, and um, we didn't have a great non-con, but we did get some wins in the non-con. And then through conference play, I think, you know, because of our analytics, because of the numbers, I mean, five top 100 teams, that's you know, there's I don't even know if the ACC has five top 100 teams. And so um, it's a it's a really tough league. And um, it would have been a multi bid league if we I would have gotten knocked off in the conference tournament. No, I'm asking you about yourself, uh, Drew, this man, you know, my dad's a coach. And, you know, my dad wanted me to get the coach. I said, nah, dad, I'm, I'm good on coaching. So but for <laughs> you, man, <laughs> at what point do you say that you want to become a coach and lead young men, and help young men grow their games and become better, better husbands and fathers once they leave your program? Yeah, I would say. I kind of didn't know. I always wanted to just play as long as I could. And then my senior year of college, um, I had some injuries that, you know, kept me out of practice. And then I was a two-time captain. So in my, my senior year, I was 
damn near a coach on the court. And so as um, you know, that season kept going and I wasn't allowed, I wasn't allowed to practice because my knees were so bad and I just playing games. Like my coaches would come up to me like, man, you should be a coach. Like this might be something you should do. And then, you know, I started talking about it with my family and they started talking to, you know, they would see Coach Izzo all the time at Michigan State uh, because my brother was a freshman playing there. And so, um, you know, Coach Izzo, my brother was getting ready to play the Sweet 16 in Indianapolis versus Duke. And I saw Coach Izzo in the hotel and he came up to me and he said, hey, man, like, if you're really thinking about coaching, like, I got a GA spot for you, like, if, if you really want to do that. And then once he once he said that to me, I was like, man, I think this might be the move because I had had a bunch of teammates that had gone and played overseas for, you know, one, two, three years. And then they were trying to come back and get started in coaching, but they were kind of out of sight, out of mind. And so I was like, man, I might as well get my coaching career started right now. And then that's, you know, kind of led me to where I'm at now. And I'm thankful for everybody that's, that's helped me along this journey. No doubt, man. Like you said, man, it's, it's funny how you, Got guys coming to coaching. There's all different ways to do it. And like you said, be humble to be a GA because some guys want to just hop into it, you know, but you got to pay your dues. I, I started off at the graveyard shift, man, two or exactly. six in the morning. <laughs> oh, that's exactly what you got to do, man. You got to cut your teeth for real. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I had the truckers and the deer listen to my show back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> No doubt. <laughs> yes, indeed. So, man, uh, ask you, ask you, man. So, how do you balance what you win so early on this on Sunday, rest versus rust? I know you want to get you guys stay stay sharp, but you also want to get some guys who need some rest as well. So, how do you balance that through these next few days, few days here? Yeah. So, the good thing with us right now is our guys are on spring break, so they're like pros right now, where all, all they got to focus on is basketball um, for the most part over this next week. So, um, we took Monday and Tuesday off. We're gonna practice. Uh, Wednesday, and then we're going to have an early, we're going to have a, a we're going to play a team inner squad scrimmage on Saturday to get some competition in. And then uh, they'll have all day Saturday and then Sunday, um, they'll have all day until this election show. And then they'll have Sunday night and Monday we'll, we'll get back after it. So I'm, uh, that's kind of what we've done over, you know, we've obviously had some success in the tournament and I'm kind of following the same template that, uh, that we've, you know, done the last two years. And tell me about, so Sister Jean, she's so so cool, so cool to watch. But tell me about how she how she to have her around, man, have her pray for you all and be there for you. So tell, tell me what she what she mean to your program and how the guys and her as well outside of the cameras. Yeah, no, it's awesome. I mean, every single game, she's she's with us. She comes to practices all the time. Um, we see her around campus. She you know does stuff with recruiting for us. I mean, she's just uh, she's the best. She's such a great ambassador. It's so. You know, in these in these days, I mean, there's so much negativity that are is associated with programs and, and different um, organizations. And for us to have such a positive um, person that everybody likes, I mean, you can't not like Sister Jean. So to have somebody that everybody likes to represent your program and to be um, such a, a amazing ambassador, it means a lot. And we love her and we love our relationship with her. We see her all the time. Well, Coach, man, thank you for your time today, man. I'll be cheering for you, man, for doing it with you real soon. Come to Atlanta, man. Hit me up. Love to see you in person as well. Go get some eating buck here somewhere, man, <laughs> as well, man. So hopefully, you know, you get, get make a big run this, this time, man, and you see you in the time for as well, brother. For sure. And my guy, too, I got to give a shout-out to my guy, Mike Stepp. Michael Stepter, he actually is a he owns the Jersey Mike's in Marietta. Jersey Mike's Marietta. I, I'm I don't know. I'm sorry. You might have to cut this off, but I'm giving my my guy a plug. He lives in Atlanta. That's my dog. We went to high school together. Went to college together. Jersey Mike's Marietta. Go everybody. Go check that out for me. Go do that. Hey folks, do it right now. Hit my man up, Marietta Jersey Mike's. You know, you know what? What street is on? What street? You no know street is on. I don't know. I don't know the street, but Jersey Mike's Marietta. I know okay. it's that, man. Go check him out. Go check him out. <laughs> All right, folks. It's Drew Valentine on the Boston Man Show. Give it a shout out as well on the show, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, coach, you be safe, man. It was fun, brother. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. All right.